Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Welcome back to the Creaky Kitchen. Uh, before we begin tonight, I wanted to take a quick moment to say that our thoughts are with the people within Ubaldi, Texas, uh, and that uh, we're all kind of thinking about what's happened there. And uh, gun violence and mass shootings have become far too common occurrence in everyday society. And while we can all agree that uh, every one of these shootings is tragic, it is school shootings like this one that are especially heartbreaking for those of us who do not have a personal connection to them. Uh, if you're struggling with comprehending this week's events, I highly encourage you to reach out to friends, family, or trained professionals to speak about what you're feeling. Uh, in addition, I highly recommend you also look into some of the mental health podcasts and wellness podcasts that GHLF offers uh, to help you get through these times as well. Uh, and now, I apologize for starting the night off on a somber note, but let's start the fun. Uh, thank you everyone for once again joining us and stepping back into the Creaky Kitchen with us. Uh, as we bring together this wonderful community of folks across the country. Uh, I'm Corey Greenblatt, the Manager of Policy and Advocacy with the Global Healthy Living Foundation. My normal co-host, Zoe Rothblatt, is feeling a little under the weather tonight, uh, so you're all stuck with me, sorry to say. Uh, we're all thrilled to be hosting this Arthritis Awareness Month special Creaky Kitchen episode uh, with our resident chef, uh, Chantel, and our special guest, live from the Pacific Northwest, uh, Ginger. Uh, before I pass it over to Chantel for her to show us how to liven up our salads, uh, I want to remind everyone to use the chat box feature, tell us where you're calling in from and interact with others attending, and also ask any questions you might have during the presentation. We'll try to address them at the end with both Chantel and Ginger before we finish. So now, Chantel, how are you doing over there in Boston? What, is, what do you think it's going to be, Celtics in six or seven? Celtics in six. Um, I will be on my couch. I will Definitely be nowhere near the garden tomorrow because um, it's going to be insane. But yeah, my house was rocking last night, just me and my husband. So I can only imagine what Causeway Street's going to look like tomorrow at about 9.15. So hopefully we'll be doing the Gino dance by the fourth quarter. And if you don't know what that is, follow me on Instagram or Twitter because I will share it as soon as the fourth quarter starts and we have a 24 point lead. But that's just my prediction. I'm just being honest. That's where I think we are. Shout out to Al Horford, love him. Anyway, so welcome back everyone to the Creaky Kitchen. This is Chantel, your resident chef, which it says on my cute little apron. <clears throat> Lovely gift from Corey and Zoe. And Zoe, I hope you're feeling better soon. Um, so what we're gonna do tonight is something really simple. We've gone over salad dressing before, but I wanted to do something, seeing as that we have someone that specializes in anti-inflammatory diets. I said to Corey, I said, I bet you turmeric's gonna be involved because I have been taking turmeric now for about three months and I've seen some benefits. So why not add it to our food, right? So what I'm gonna do is just a quick salad dressing and then we can cut to ginger and I will be just chopping veggies and stuff like that. Nothing major or amazing. Um, I did make up a batch of the dressing earlier because I'm gonna be topping my salad with a little bit of protein um, I wanted to do some chicken, so we got some thinly sliced chicken and switched it all up in a bag with the dressing, um, as well as the, the halved lemons. So we have the lemon oil in there and everything. So that's ready to go. Those take about three minutes aside, um, just in a pan, simple dimple. So I'll be doing that as well. But let's get into this dressing. So, you know, I love this. My favorite thing. It's like a little micro plate. I love it. Um, you always want to <clears throat> pro tip, dust your lemons before you squeeze them. I learned that the hard way. So we're just going to take the zest <clears throat> of a couple of lemons and you just want to go until you get to that little white part. You don't want to get any of the pip. And I think we've probably gone over this a million times, but it always bears repeating. <clears throat> so we're going to take the zest of the lemon and I put these lemons into the microwave for a couple of seconds before everyone joined in and that just kind of helps to loosen the juices a little bit because sometimes with you know if your hands aren't feeling that great you might not want to do the rolling of them and everything like that so just to get the juices moving oh that one these are really big lemons so i might only do the zest of one um but yeah so we're going to zest the lemon and then again with the rasp we're going to use uh take a clove garlic if you like more add more if you like less don't add it at all. This is a pretty fat clove, so we're just gonna go ahead and grate that. And there's also a lot of other alternatives to grating your own garlic fresh. 
Um, I like the cubes that you can get in the freezer section. And each cube is about a clove of garlic. Um, those are great. They melt down in a couple of seconds, really. Um, so you can use those if you don't want to do the grating part, because this can be a little bit tedious, as you can see. <clears throat> and there's also jarred garlic. And there's also, you can get just garlic that's already pre-peeled. I was peeling this garlic today, and it was a pain. It kept getting stuck all over my hands, and that was not fun for me. So <clears throat> take a tip from me. Get something from the store. All right, I'll move this out of the way just a wee bit. And like I said, juicy lemon. So it's going to be the juice of a couple of lemons. <clears throat> uh, one thing I forgot to add to the recipe was a little bit of honey. And mainly because when I was testing, ooh, juicy lemon. When I was <laughs> testing this recipe, um, all of my honey has like crystals in it. So if anyone in the chat has an idea for how I can decrystallize my honey, that would be really helpful because I, I've been going on maybe a week of just tea with no honey and this is not good for me. I like my honey. So juicer, juice of a couple of lemons in here. And you can get like Ina has one of those cool little electric juicers. Um, I don't have one of those because I don't have enough counter space because I have too many other gadgets. <laughs> but one day, one day I will get one. I will be just like her. So the juice of a couple of lemons. And then we're gonna add some color. So it's springtime, right? We want things to look bright and sunny. And what's more sunny than turmeric? And I'm sure we'll hear about how it has great anti-inflammatory properties and things of that nature, but it makes things a funky color and I love that. Um, I like when my food has color. Why? Because you eat with your eyes first. Oh, also, I got a haircut and for some reason it thinks I'm Clark Kent, so just ignore that. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. Um, don't do that. Don't do that. Just don't. <laughs> I'm a semi-professional. So it's about a teaspoon and I'm going to just eyeball it. Um, if you want to measure, feel free. And then <clears throat> a teaspoon of turmeric, and that's gonna like brighten this whole dressing up. It's gonna look so pretty on all of these veggies, and these veggies are gonna really like it. That's a bunch of oregano. Yep, that's a technical, technical term. Um, I like freshly cracked black pepper, and yeah, 16, that's a good number. And then just a pinch or two of salt. And so that's going to sit there and chill for a second while I attempt to open the Dijon mustard. This has already been opened. Wish me luck. It didn't. But you're going to add like a heaping table, teaspoon, well, teaspoon, tablespoon. But basically this just helps the, it helps the dressing emulsify. And what that means is that it helps the oil blend in to the liquid because as we know, oil and liquid, they don't really like, they're, they're not friends. <clears throat> this is my sad little bear. Look at him. He's sad. He doesn't have a lot left. We're just going to put a couple of drops of him in. If, if, it's live TV, people. <laughs> All right, a little bit of honey and <clears throat> the olive oil. Now I have my olive oil in this kind of a bottle with a speed pour on it. Uh, reason being is that it's easier for me to measure, might not be for you. So if you want to use your measuring cup, feel free. Everything that's in the bowl, I'm going to whip up and the color is unbelievable. It's like traffic light yellow. And this bowl I've had for a lot of years, more than a lot of people have been alive. So <laughs> it's not a millennial, but <laughs> it's around that age. Um, so, it could, it could get a job with, a, with good benefits at this point. Um, so I know how much oil to add by sound, but it's generally the ratio is, I'd say two to one oil to, oil to your liquid. That's what most people like to do. Um, I'm more of a 50-50 kind of girl. But great to me so far. 
Now, the one thing you always have to do is taste your food. Don't let anybody spit you, just put your pinky in there. It doesn't matter. They're going to know, though, because your pinky is going to be yellow for like a week. And that has like a really, really, really good balance of acid and sweet and salty and the pepper and the oregano. And then the earthiness of the turmeric is there. And it's, yeah, it's a winning, winning combination. So that's just going to chill out in the back. I'm going to end up chopping up all these vegetables, but I just want to show you one other thing that I kind of always through like the spring and summer have in the, have in the fridge. You get a can of chickpeas, drain them, rinse them, put them in a little tiny bowl. <laughs> and then I dress them with red wine vinegar, olive oil, salt, a little black pepper and pepperoncino, and sometimes garlic. But since there's garlic in the dressing, there's garlic in the chicken. I want to be able to talk to my husband for the rest of the night. So we've avoided the garlic in this, but these are great as like a snack. Also, you can take these um, minus the vinegar and put them on a roasting pan at like 400 and make them into like a nice crispy moment. And those go, go great on top of a salad as well. So this is just going to be one of our toppings. And then I've got some uh, Kalamata olives. I've got some feta. Yes, I was lazy and I got the pre shredded feta. It is what it is, you know, I just, it wasn't that day. It's been a long day. And then I just so happened to, I made a huge pasta dish yesterday that needed fresh basil. I have extra fresh basil, so it's gonna end up in this salad because you gotta use it up, right? Because it's gonna turn to a different color by like tomorrow morning. They're like avocados and they're only good for like 20 minutes. So I'm gonna add all of that into here. And you guys are probably saying, where's the lettuce? There's no, there's no lettuce. There's no lettuce. Not because I forgot to buy lettuce, because there's lettuce in there. The fridge is this way, in case you guys don't know, because you never see the whole kitchen. Um, <laughs> but there is no lettuce. Um, I have a very dear friend who, her family is from Greece, and I came over to her house and I thought that I was just so cool because I was going to make her a Greek salad. And I did, and she said, what is this? And I said, it's, it's a salad. It's a Greek salad. It's like you get at any, any pizza shop, you know? It's, she says, no, 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 that's not a Greek salad. And the next time I went to her house, she proceeded to make me a Greek salad. And it reminded me of something that my dad used to make, which is a Persian Shirazi salad, which also has no lettuce. So salads don't necessarily have to have lettuce. And I like this because it does end up being a little bit more filling because you're just dealing with these dense vegetables, a little bit of protein, the chickpeas, and it doesn't have all the fluff, if that makes any sense. So with that, I am going to chop, chop, chop away, add everything into my bowl, let it swim around and make friends. Um, I forgot a red onion, but what, what happens every time we're in the kitchen? I always forget something. So just imagine there's a red onion in there. It's fine, use your imagination. So I'm gonna go ahead and start chopping and I will pass it back to you, Gordy. Sounds good, Chantel. Uh, that sounds delicious. Uh, speaking of chickpeas, I last night actually was making a chickpea dish and learned that you can use the aquafaba, which is the chickpea liquid, to make a vegan mayo, which I, I, tr I made that for the first time last night, and that came out Also very make good. chocolate mousse with it. That's you the next thing on my vegan, list. That's the next thing. Try the vegan chocolate mousse. A vegan chocolate mousse with chickpea aquafaba. All right, I think that that can work on work, work for my diet. Um, so thank you so much. Um, before we pass it over to Ginger uh, for her presentation, uh, I spoke about our uh, the GHL podcast network earlier. I wanted to let everyone know uh, again that that's something that I really recommend people check out. Uh, it's the web page, which I'll post in the chat, is ghlf.org backslash listen. Uh, there's lots of different topics to discuss. Uh, Amy, who is our tech guru, who is on this chat tonight, hosts a podcast. Uh, Zoe, who is our other co-host, hosts, I think, three podcasts at this point. Um, so there's, they span a whole different range of uh, topics from uh, biosimilars to mental health and wellness to uh, healthcare news, all these different things to Dungeons and Dragons uh, podcast as well about healthcare. So highly recommend them. Um, I'll put that in the chat for anyone who isn't aware of them, um, but just wanted to give that little uh, break. Uh, so with that, I want to turn it over to our guest of the night, uh, nutritionist uh, who's and a author uh, from the Pacific Northwest, uh, Ginger, am I pronouncing your last name right, Fulton? 
probably got that wrong based on how you're you're looking <laughs> um, so Holton, I, Holton, Holton. You're really close. Yeah. darn it um well i'm sorry about that ginger holton uh thank you so much for joining us and with that uh looking forward to what you have to say tonight i'm really excited to be here let me share my screen i made a little presentation for you all i thought that would be fun let me just grab this really quick and i will get in present mode oopsies here we go Take your time. Here we go. Can you see that? Cool. Great. Yeah. Um, I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. I live here in Seattle and I'm looking outside right now and it is cloudy and raining just in time for Memorial Day weekend, like it is most years. And I wanted to title this presentation Happy Arthritis Awareness Month because though I know that arthritis can be really challenging, really painful and cause a lot of challenges in people's lives. It's something that I really love talking about and there's so much that we can do to help people. And so I just feel like hopefully it is happy because people are feeling empowered and feeling better because they're supporting themselves through nutrition. That's always my hope. So just a couple like disclaimers and about me so you can know a little bit more about who's talking to you about nutrition because um, it's really, that's really important. Um, please connect with me if I don't know you yet. I'm Champagne Nutrition, that is my, my business. I do a vir virtual private practice. So I work with people all over the country. And of course you can also find me via my name, Ginger Holton RD for registered dietitian. Um, I also run a sub company called Seattle Cancer Nutritionist because I'm a cancer care expert. And so that's a part of what I do also. And so that's a separate site. I work at my local university here, Bastyr University. That's where I graduated from as well for nutrition. And I've written a couple books, Anti-Inflammatory Diet Meal Prep and How to Eat to Beat Disease Cookbook. It's a tongue twister. But because of the anti-inflammatory diet meal prep, that's why I work with so many people with arthritis and, and joint pain. And that's why I'm excited to be here with you today. And I get a lot of questions about inflammation. What is it? How does it work? What food should I eat? What food should I avoid? So that's what I wanted to talk about today. And I will preface by saying that Chantelle is basically an anti-inflammatory guru over there in her kitchen. She talked about turmeric oregano, lemon, garlic, olive oil, chickpeas, veggies. I mean, pretty much everything that she was cooking with is anti-inflammatory. So great work. And I am gonna talk about those things today. I'm gonna to talk about turmeric for sure. So you are so right. It shows up on the do eat list. So let's dive into this a little bit. And I'd love for you guys to be chatting your questions. I have it pulled up and I will have some time for Q and A at the end. So anything that pops into your mind, let me know. Cause this is your moment to get all your nutrition questions answered. And I'm running a couple of screens. So I'm looking at you and I'm looking over here too. So I think that the concept of anti-inflammatory diet gets a little confusing because it's not like other diets that are very defined. Vegan, we know exactly what it is, right? Mediterranean has its own pyramid. Uh, even the My Healthy Plate, you know exactly what to put on the plate. Even keto, it has very, very specific guidelines. But an anti-inflammatory diet is a little bit less defined and it's a bit up to an individual's interpretation. So when I wrote my book, I did a super deep dive into human research on what is the connection between anti-inflammatory foods and how it affects human health. So I looked at big studies, human studies, recent studies to really find out, you know, what are the myths? Like, what about gluten? What about dairy? Is that true? Is it not? Like, what are you hearing? And so that's what I'm going to talk about today with you. So I'm going to talk about foods to enjoy, foods to minimize, or some of those mythical foods that I'm talking about, and then foods to avoid. And the number one question I get about anti-inflammatory diets is, what do I stop eating? What do I cut out? But my news for you today is actually, it's more about what to add in. And so I'd love to start to get you thinking about that and to move away from the let's cut everything out into the let's add more things in type of space. And then I do wanna talk a little bit about anti-inflammatory lifestyle. Though I'm a nutritionist, um, I really believe that there's so many intersections between nutrition, stress, sleep, uh, physical activity, all those things come together. And so actually in my practice, all my dietitians and I talk about those things with our clients. And so um, I'd like to talk to you about it today as well, because it affects arthritis and joint health very, very much. So let's dive in right away. And let's talk about what an anti-inflammatory diet is. 
basically in a nutshell, it's eating a balanced dietary pattern, pattern, mostly plant-based. People always ask me, well, does that mean I can never eat meat? No, it actually is kind of a flexitarian type of diet, but most of us should probably be eating more plants, right? Is that you? It's me. It's most of us, right? Um, so that's what you're going to see on these lists. Uh, fruits, vegetables, healthy fats, lean protein, like chicken and fish show up in an anti-inflammatory diet. So do plant proteins. That might be like tofu, nuts, seeds, um, whole grains, I'm thinking um, beans and lentils. So there's a lot of different plant proteins that we can look at. Um, and then, yeah, I already mentioned whole grains. So all of these foods have fiber, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, really important compounds that help the body calm down a little bit um, and start to lower inflammation. So my example of inflammation, if you're kind of like, what is it? What are you talking about? Is if you cut your hand, you would have a red, sore, swollen, irritated cut. That is inflammation that you can see. And it's really important that the body is able to have inflammation and heal itself. So it's a really important process. What happens is sometimes inside the body, we start to get chronically inflamed. And then you have that red, hot irritation going on in the inside of the body. If you have arthritis, you might notice that in your joints, red, hot, swollen joints. It can also kind of happen everywhere. And that's when you start to get into chronic diseases. Inflammation is linked to cancer, to heart disease, to diabetes. There are some connections there. And so that's why we want to say, how can we do our very best to calm inflammation? Some of it is medical related. You need different medical treatments or medicine. Um, some of it's lifestyle and some of it's diet. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All of these foods provide antioxidants and antioxidants are healthy compounds in foods that are not vitamins or minerals. Most of the time, some are vitamins, but they're healthy compounds in foods, a lot of times associated with those bright colors, like we talked about turmeric, bright yellow. And so that is the antioxidants shining through. Those help the body calm inflammation and essential nutrients, that's vitamins, that's minerals, those also can help the body calm inflammation. So that's why all these kind of foods are so, so helpful. So the moment you've all been waiting for, let's talk about foods to enjoy, because I know that you're all sitting there saying, okay, dietitian, tell me what to eat, and this is it. So let's start at the top, uh, whole grains. Some of you might be surprised because there's a lot of buzz right now about low carb diets or, you know, you shouldn't eat grains if you have arthritis or that kind of thing. But what else you'll see over and over and over again in the human research is whole grains are healthy and anti-inflammatory. They're high in fiber, they're high in B vitamins, they contain antioxidants. Whether you eat gluten or not, you have a lot of different options for whole grains. Actually, oats or oats and quinoa, brown rice, all, all those things don't have gluten at all. So we're going to talk about gluten on the next slide. So definitely drop your questions in about it. But there's a lot of different whole grains that are very, very healthy. Otherwise, I feel like most people need to be eating more beans. And it's so cool that today we're talking about chickpeas. That was such a cool idea to put them on top of the salad or make them as a snack. Um, because all beans are good beans. And I often get asked which bean is the best bean. And the answer is they're all equal. They all have really similar properties and they all have their own um, different antioxidants because remember colors are antioxidants. Black beans have a lot of antioxidants. So do red beans, so do chickpeas. And so those kind of beans are really helpful for you to eat. Um, also, we should be doing lentils and soy. I get a lot of questions about soy, um, but if you look at the research, tofu, tempeh, edamame, miso, edamame, um, yeah, edamame, I said tofu tempeh, there's so many different kinds, soy milk even, these types of basically whole minimally processed soy foods show up again and again as being really anti-inflammatory. Fruits and veggies, um, we really want to look at the colors here, right? I'm so glad that Chantel is cooking with those colorful veggies today because most of us need to be eating more. I didn't get all of them down because there's literally not enough room on the slide for all the veggies that I wanted to list or all the fruits, um, but I just put some of the big categories. Who knows, put in the chat box, who knows what a cruciferous veggie is? This is your test, drop it in there. I see some people might know. I'm gonna keep going, drop it in, tell me what example of cruciferous veggies. Oh, broccoli's a good one, nice job. Kale is, okay, this is really interesting. Kale is a crucifer, lettuce is not. So lettuce and spinach are green leafies, kale is a cruciferous veggie, so is bok choy. 
so interesting. Cabbage is a good one. Yep, broccoli. Uh, cauliflower is a good one. Collards are not. Collards are leafy greens. <laughs> yep, I know it gets a little confusing. Brussels sprouts, that's a great one and really nice job. So yeah, um, there's a few more that are kind of like lesser known. So drop them in if you know them. Um, but yeah, uh, leafy greens and, and crucifers are both really good. Anyhow, um, omega-3 fats and healthy fats. So we're talking nuts and seeds like walnuts, chia, hemp, flax, sunflower seeds, peanuts. There's so many kinds. Peanuts are legumes, but I'm going to put them in this category. And then a lot of times on an anti-inflammatory diet and a Mediterranean diet, you'll see salmon, halibut, trout, herring, sardines, mackerel, anchovies. If you like those kind of foods, they're really high in omega-3s. Finally, uh, we were talking about this earlier, herbs and spices. So cocoa, actually ginger, garlic, turmeric, that one gets a, a gold star. Basil, oregano, cumin, thyme, cinnamon, basil, mint, dill, parsley, sage, cilantro, rosemary. There's so many more. I wrote them all down here for you, but I'm missing a couple. So if there's any of your favorites that I don't have on here, drop them in the chat. Um, but really what we want to do on an anti-inflammatory diet is think about how can we add more fresh and dried herbs because they really have a lot of nutrition and antioxidants that help calm inflammation. I also put tea on the bottom. All tea is good tea and can really help calm inflammation too. It's a great hydrating beverage. So this is what to eat on an anti-inflammatory diet in a nutshell. This is my hardest page because this is foods to minimize maybe for some of you. And I really want you to take this with a grain of salt, literally, because it, we're in we're in a medium land right now. So my business's name is Champagne Nutrition, right? Because I love champagne and I really believe that red wine can be part of a diet if that works for you. Um, but the honest truth is alcohol, especially at high levels, is inflammatory. It can cause some health problems. It's not good for the liver. And, you know, again, especially at high levels, it really can increase inflammation. So these are foods to minimize, not avoid, but probably not have a lot of. Wheat and gluten, I just told you how good whole grains are. Some people have issues with gluten. Some people with arthritis notice that they do better without gluten. And so I'm just here to be neutral. A lot of like, I, I eat gluten, it really works for me. Some people, it doesn't work for them at all. And so I think uh, that there's a lot of people that have questions about this. And so my dietitian answer for you is um, work with a dietitian and talk about whether it's right for you or not and how to tell and possibly consider an elimination diet. But if you eat bread and you eat gluten and you feel good, then I would say you have the green light and you don't need to limit this at all because it has a lot of nutritional benefit. The same thing goes for dairy. What you'll hear out there in the world is like dairy is inflammatory, don't eat dairy. But when I dove, dove into the research, I saw over and over and over, especially low fat dairy was linked to decreased inflammation. Dairy is an anti-inflammatory food in a lot of human research. Some people do great with dairy, have no problems. Some people don't. And so there's this large spectrum. I get a lot of questions about it. So if you're a person that has issues with dairy and it causes inflammation, stay away from it. But if you're like, no, I feel great. I love dairy and I, I handle it well, then it's a green light for you. So this is the confusing part, I think, because it is so personal and it's hard to say this is inflammatory and this isn't. There's a lot of gray area. And so that's where, where we are here. But there is a list of foods generally to avoid. And when I say avoid, I don't mean never, 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 or it's really bad for you. What I mean is generally these are foods that we're going to steer clear of, um, but maybe you have some sometimes. It doesn't have to be completely black or white, all or nothing. It's just like eat more of the foods to eat and eat less of the foods to avoid. So what we're looking at here, the general theme is very, very processed foods. So every single thing that Chantel made tonight was like completely unprocessed, whole foods, so easy. You know, that's such, such a wonderful thing to make that doesn't have any of these foods. Um, Highly processed foods that are colored and flavored and come in packages, probably not the best. A lot of them do have sometimes trans fats, so they're kind of like banned in the US now because they cause a lot of health problems and inflammation. Sugar substitutes, again, not innately bad, but they usually are highly processed and in highly processed foods. Artificial colors and flavors and yeah, aromas and all that. We want the natural stuff. And then fried foods, I would say, especially in excess, right? Not that they're terrible, but just if you eat them every day, often they can cause more inflammation in the body, says the research. Um, I also put up here added sugars and I put them in italics because 
on the new nutrition label, there's a section, I don't know if you've noticed it, it says added sugars. A lot of people start to avoid bananas or pineapple or apples or whole grains because they contain sugar, but really those are just carbohydrate rich foods, right? And we need them and they're healthy and they're on the anti-inflammatory list. The added sugars, like the syrups, the sugar, sugar, the, the powdered sugar, like all of those sugars, um, those are added, they're in excess and at high levels, they can cause inflammation. So just read the label, look for added sugars and try to minimize those throughout your day and you'll be on the right path. So this is the foods to avoid list. Definitely drop me any questions if you have them popping up. Um, but I actually wanted to move to my next page, which is if you're moving to an anti-inflammatory diet, how do you start to encompass that? And how do you adjust to it? Because changing your diet can be a big deal. You know, you've had your habits for so long in your life. So trying new recipes and trying new foods can be kind of challenging. So the first thing that I want you to do is to think about increasing foods that you really enjoy. You know, you can be like, hey, I forgot all about beans. I like beans and I should be eating more of them. Great. Or, hey, you mentioned uh, bok choy. What is that? How do I make it? Awesome. You know, so it's more about just thinking about what have you been missing? What could you bring back in? When you go to the grocery store, what looks good? What looks like it's in season? You go to the farmer's market, trying new foods and bringing things into the diet. Also, I think a lot of you know dietary changes just really come down to your openness about trying new recipes. So there's so many great books out there. There's so many great websites that have anti-inflammatory um, recipes. And I know that you have a great chef right here teaching you them too. And it really is about like, I don't really like garlic in the past, but maybe I'll like it this way. I'm gonna try it and see how I feel. Um, swap in healthy fats. So maybe instead of you know cooking with, I'm trying to think like canola oil, it's not a bad oil, but instead of cooking with canola oil, maybe you're cooking with olive oil, right? Olive oil is kind of the gold standard. Instead of having a fried food, maybe you're having a baked food and just kind of swapping out healthy fats, adding in some nuts, seeds, avocado, those heart healthy um, fats can be a great place to start. You can also rethink your snacks. I mean, so many times I think snacks are like chips or cookies, not bad, but could they be like a veggie with a really delicious dip or those, you know, baked chickpeas or peanut butter on a, on a whole grain cracker, something like that. Um, you know, low fat yogurt, that's a great dairy product. Um, so I would start by rethinking your snacks. That's often a really great place to start. You can work on increasing veggies and fruits in every meal. Who eats veggies at breakfast? There's so many ways to include them. I think sometimes they get left out of that meal, but there's actually some really fun things to do. I had an omelet the other day with like tons of mushrooms and some tomatoes. So there's so, so yeah, a veggie omelet. It's like very, very good. Um, I have an egg cup recipe where you put like veggies and in, in eggs and bake them. Those are really good. I'm seeing side salad with breakfast. That's the best. I always order that savory oats. You guys have such good, such good options. And I did see some questions in there, um, up there too, that I'll definitely get to smoothies. I mean, throw some spinach or kale in there and it's just so, so easy. Great way to get fruits and veggies. Um, so I think we just need to get creative and think about how to get more fruits and veggies going. Um, and also get creative with herbs and spices. You know, a lot of times when I go to the, oh yeah, spinach egg omelet, nice, nice jelly. And when I go to the grocery store, I usually just like look at all the fresh herbs, like the parsley, cilantro, dill, and just grab a bunch, keep it on some water in my, um, on my kitchen counter and just like pull off of it, off of it all week. Right. Oh, there. Oh, that's exactly what you're doing. I love that. Chantal. <laughs> so perfect. We're on the same page. Um, you can also grow them in your garden, you know, and just really try to increase them more and more and more in a natural way. Um, let's see, I want to, let me just see what I've got next for you. Ooh, I want to talk about anti-inflammatory lifestyle, but first I think I want to answer some of these questions if that's okay. Um, I'm going to go back up. Are there any particular whole grain, grain bread brands? That's a tongue twister that are better than others. Definitely drop any that you guys love. I just really like, um, Dave's killer bread. I think they do such a nice job. They have minimal additives. They have like seeds and whole grains. The, um, they don't have, yeah, a lot of additives and they're just really nice, like whole grain product. That's my favorite, but everybody else drop other favorites that you have if you have some. Um, honey and maple syrup, really great question. Those are considered added sugars, actually. 
I use them all the time. I think they're fantastic. And like this recipe tonight, it needs a little bit of sweetness, right? It's like a culinary thing that you definitely need. The amount that Chantel added was very small. And so I would think that would fit completely easily into a whole foods diet. But it's important to know that honey and maple syrup are added sugars and they should be generally minimized in the diet. Um, yeah, it's a great, great question. We talked about breakfast a lot. Oh, pecan oil. So right now, if you go to the grocery store, there's this aisle with all these different types of oil. There's olive oil and avocado oil and pecan oil. Um, they can absolutely be intertwined. Chantel would know more about this than I, but you do need to be careful sometimes of the smoke point with different oils. Some are better to cook at high heats and some are better to use like on a salad dressing that you're not heating very much. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let me answer a couple more and then I'll go on to my last slide and we'll we'll get moving. Um, how much fresh ginger and turmeric should you aim to intake per week? That's such a good question. There's not like a very specific gram amount that I'm familiar with that's like, this is the gold standard. Um, what I actually do is I keep a piece of turmeric and ginger in my freezer because it lasts longer. And then I just grate it into all sorts of different things. I try to use a little bit in different ways every day if I can. Um, and I would probably throw garlic in there too. Like those three are a really great thing to rotate, um, but I don't have a gram amount for you. Some people do supplement with it and then you're gonna get into higher doses, but I would just say, try to start making it part of your natural life and just be grading it in here and there. And you'll get that constant support from those foods. And then Ray has such a cool comment. It took me a year to transition to a plant-based diet. I added wild salmon and halibut. And that is really a great, comments because it doesn't have to happen overnight, right, Ray? It sounds like you really just took steps and included foods that you enjoy and you really transitioned to an anti-inflammatory diet or a plant-based diet. And I think that's a perfect way to do it. Just like step-by-step, step, don't dump your whole world upside down, right? Um, and one more, and then I'll get to some in the future, is fresh turmeric better than the powdered kind in the jar? You know, Amy, I use both. I use both all the time. So I think the powdered kind is really, really easy. So sometimes that's better. If you have issues with your hands and you have arthritis in your hands, um, it's a lot easier to just use the powdered kind. But if you have help or you can do it yourself, I do like to grate the fresh stuff because it has a very strong flavor that I really like. So keep sending in questions because we'll have a little bit of time, but I wanted to talk to you about anti-inflammatory lifestyle. And I chose this picture of this woman like meditating very specifically because she's outside in the, in the woods. And so there's a couple benefits here. Um, there is a lot of really interesting research about all of these lifestyle factors and how they relate to inflammation and how they relate to arthritis. So I know it might be unexpected that your dietitian and the anti-inflammatory diet is talking today about hydration or reducing stress, but honestly, if you're eating the most beautiful anti-inflammatory diet in the world and everything's perfect with your diet, but you're super stressed out, you could still have inflammation. If you don't sleep, you still could have inflammation. If you don't exercise or move your body, you could have a problem getting your inflammation under control. So, um, I always wanted to put on your radar to think about hydration through tea and water because you don't want to walk around dehydrated that can stress the body. This is probably one of the most important points on this slide, reduce stress. I tell my clients all the time, I'm not out here to like change your life or like tell you how to reduce stress. I'm not a therapist, but sometimes we talk about stress management te techniques. Um, sometimes my clients come to the realization that their job just, they really need to make a change or they need to make a change in their living environment or, you know, a relationship that they have because it's actually getting in the way of their nutrition and health goals. So I just want you to reflect, you know, where are you on your stress journey? Is it affecting your health and your inflammation? Do you notice worse arthritis symptoms when you're stressed? A lot of my clients actually do. Um, I said make movement a part of your daily life very specifically. I didn't say work out for two hours. I didn't say run a triathlon. I didn't say um, physical activity even because of course, if you are living with arthritis, you might have some physical limitations and you can still usually move your body in some way that works for you. So whether you're in the pool or you're working with a, a physical therapist or um, you're just even doing some light stretching. I think moving your body every day is a really important thing that can help reduce inflammation. 
finally, assessing your sleep quality and quantity. I can't tell you how many times I've referred my clients out to go get like a sleep apnea test or meet with a sleep specialist or really start to assess their physical environment. If you don't sleep well or you don't sleep enough, you could really struggle with inflammation. And then finally, you know, I think that connecting with others in meaningful ways really goes into the stress management part of this. And we've gone through a really tough time in uh, COVID and a lot of people have not been able to connect in meaningful ways. And so I really put that as part of holistic wellness and lowering inflammation and um, supporting your body in a way that could be really helpful for your health. So when you're thinking about anti-inflammatory diets, don't forget about the lifestyle stuff because it's not just about the diet. You need to think a bit more holistically. So I do have some resources. Um, I'll leave it here. I wanted to show you my books because a lot of people ask, especially about the anti-inflammatory diet one. Um, so I have that there. I have my newsletter at the bottom because I send out like a, every once or twice a week, I send out my newsletter of like events that I'm doing like this one, or I'll send out discount codes and things. And I'm also launching the ebook like today or tomorrow. I'm about to announce it on my, on my channels. Um, it's meal prep for weight loss 101 in a non-restrictive, really holistic way. So lots of fun resources for you because I just really want to help everybody feel better, um, especially if they've got joint related stuff going on. Um, but I would love to do some more questions. Are we feeling like we have time for that and it's a good fit? Cool, great. These are really good questions. Um, I use about half an inch of fresh ginger and turmeric each daily, does that seem to be enough? You are really knocking it out of the park, I would say. <laughs> you are doing a great job. Um, that is probably more than most people get to do. It's not too much, but I think it's a great, great start. A half inch of ginger and turmeric is a really lovely amount, so excellent work. I'm reading, I use regular olive oil for cooking and extra virgin olive oil for dressings, et cetera. Uncooked says our, our resident chef, coconut oil is great for cooking and I love toasted sesame as a flavor enhancer. I use toasted sesame oil to uh, marinate my tofu. It's so strong and delicious. And I agree, coconut oil, though it's a saturated fat, is amazing for cook for high heat cooking and it has a lovely flavor. I also grease baking pans with it sometimes if I'm making something that coconut oil would complement. So really great uh, options for using different types of oils. Um, Shelly says, I transitioned to an anti-inflammatory foods. It took about a month and stopped eating processed foods. I feel a lot better and have more energy. I will say that the, the desire to have more energy is one of the number one benefits that people get from changing their diet in this way. I hear that over and over and over. I've also heard a lot of people lower their blood pressure or lower their cholesterol levels. A lot of people message me, especially after doing like the anti-inflammatory meal plan. And they're like, my cholesterol dropped 50 points. Like I've heard it over and over. No guarantees, but it, I've heard a lot of people that have had that benefit. And Shelly, I really liked, again, kind of like Ray, that you transitioned over time, right? You don't have to do everything at once. You can take step-by-step -step, step increments week by week to start to decrease processed foods and increase anti-inflammatory foods. That's such a great way to do it. Oh, Anne has a really good question because we've all been saying wild salmon. She says when buying salmon, is wild the only beneficial salmon? And actually, I'm really glad you brought that up because farmed fish have come a really, really long way recently. There's been a lot of changes in aquaculture. We also need changes in aquaculture because of issues with our oceans and with, with fishing. So I don't know, there's some really cool stuff going on up here in the Pacific Northwest where they are farming salmon out in the ocean in really sustainable, amazing ways. So I really think we do need to learn a little bit more about aquaculture and how some fish is actually really done well farmed. They have trout farms in Idaho now, and they, there's a lot of shellfish farms. So I think we need to start to change our opinion about farmed fish. I think some is better than others, but the more you get to know that process and talk to the source that you're buying it from, some farmed fish actually is really excellent. So thanks for bringing that up. I think we do need to, uh, we do need to start to think about that differently. Uh, it was, you know, really different when it was new, like back in the nineties, but it's changing now. Uh, Rekha, will the slides be shared? I wasn't sure, Corey, if you're going to be able to share the, share the slides. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm fine with that too. I'd love to share them. Oh, it's going to be on the YouTube channel too. Great, great, great. How do we improve sleep with food? That's such a good one. Um, I'm trying to think about how to answer that. I think one thing we should think about, about improving sleep with food is 
eating enough late in the evening because everybody's into intermittent fasting now, but if you're really hungry before bed, that can be a problem. And on the flip side, eating, not eating too much too close to bed, right? And so I think you need to think about the general timing of your day and how your blood sugars are high or low. And if you're eating on a regular schedule. So to me, part of eating an anti-inflammatory lifestyle is eating on a regular basis. I don't do a lot with intermittent fasting because I need my clients to be stable and energized throughout the day. It's very individualized. I definitely have some people that are doing different patterns, but I would think about where your blood sugars are, you know, around the time of sleeping and also really keep a close eye on sugar and alcohol because those can mess with your blood sugars and disrupt your sleep. Uh, seafood watch is a great resource for sustainable fish. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Anne. Um, I'm just really glad you brought that up. It's such an important point. And you know, small omega-3 fish like anchovies and sardines and, and, and sardines and mackerel, those are generally really sustainable sources too. And let's see, I'll do two last ones if that's okay. Um, let's see. If you like herbs and have the space last spring, this is Anne did an episode of um, keeping your own garden. Awesome. So there's a YouTube channel there. I'm definitely going to watch it. Thank you for that. I need to get my herb garden going. And then can you talk about lemon? I put four slices of lemon in my water every day and keep refilling it and eat the same lemon and skin um, at the end of the day. Someone told me the acid might be too much. Is that true? Well, you might want to meet with your dentist about that because I know that sometimes like, like dentally it can be an issue, but I think that flavored water is such a great way to get more hydration. So that's really smart. It also has vitamin C and you're getting some fiber from eating the lemon. So if you like doing that and your teeth are good and your dentist gives you the thumbs up, then I would say um, you're just getting more citrus and lemons are anti-inflammatory fruits. So that sounds like a really good plan. Uh, Rika, it seems like you're really into eating healthy and I just, I love hearing that. And the final one before I'll wrap up is Cedra. I began eating anti-inflammatory over 20 years ago and due to surviving breast cancer, I have severe osteoarthritis, but have not had to take any over-the-counter or prescription meds. Um, I found it helps my autoimmune disorders as well. I've been trying to teach this to others for over 10 years. You're a retired nurse, yay to my nurses out there working as a wellness coach consultant. That's so awesome. Um, we have so much in common because I work with people that have cancer and I also do a lot of autoimmune work because of the anti-inflammatory connection. So thanks for all the good work you do. And as you know, it can change people's lives. And um, I just love that there's a lot of us out there doing this work. Uh, it's really important. And when you start to see how it helps people, uh, I think it really is really, really inspirational. So um, I just have my, well, there's the Q&A and here's my contact. And I just really hope that all of you guys will connect with me. And I'm just so happy that I got to come here today. This is an amazing audience with such thoughtful questions. And I hope this was really helpful to you. A lot of you are already on the right path. Uh, Ginger, thank you so much. Uh, this was awesome. Uh, I know that there's a lot of stuff that I'm personally going to take from this. I love your idea of kind of rather than eliminating stuff, adding stuff to your diet as opposed uh, as a way to look at it. I think that's a great way uh, that really we all can kind of look at it. Um, and really one of my big takeaways is I now have an excuse to eat more cheese. Um, so I'll accept that. Um, so Let's pass it back to Chantel real quick. Chantel, how's it going over there? How's the salad looking? We almost ready for a nice, healthy, healthy dinner? We are. And that means that my husband, who has been banished to the deck because he was coughing earlier. <laughs> so he's watching from out there. Hi, Andre. Um, and it's his first time Zooming with us. So welcome. He's usually in the kitchen with me. So this is this is weird to talk to. All I have to talk to is my flower, my flower arrangement and you guys. So um, and the flower arrangement was too big this one this week to put over here, which I usually do. So I have, I'm stepping out of frame. I've cooked off our chicken. It's bright yellow, like bright yellow, like beaming, beaming. And this is a plate that he chose, so, okay. Um, <laughs> and our salad, I, my, my hands smell like basil right now because instead of cutting my basil, I had a moment, I, I don't know if you guys could see, I was off in the corner, but I stacked on my basil and I was gonna chiffon on it. And then I went, no, you're bruising it. Why are you doing this? Don't do that. Don't do that to these beautiful people. So instead I hand tore the basil, the basil's in there. <clears throat> this salad, legit, it's so pretty. I don't know if you guys can see, hopefully you can. Look at that, it's, a, it's like a literal rainbow. 
but there's a lot of green in it because the Celtics are going to win tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and top it. Um, like she was saying, yep, I keep my basil in a champagne glass. So what are the odds of that? Yes, a champagne glass for basil and parsley and cilantro and everything. Everything goes in the, into a champagne glass. This whole cabinet, this, this, this floor and this floor of this cabinet are literally all beans. Black beans, red beans, pink beans, abuelas, um, everything that you could imagine, chickpeas, they're all in here. And then it's all tomatoes at the top. I won't show you because, oh wait, I did organize it. Okay, hi, it's cute. Anyway, so let's top off our salad. Off camera, I opened this myself with some Kalamata olives. And I don't mind if a little bit of the vinegar from here gets, gets in, doesn't bother me. It's all flavor. So I'm just gonna add a few in. There are probably gonna be more added later when Andre and I start nom nomming on this. And then we're going to add some of those yummy chickpeas. And this is so crazy. I didn't know that all these things were like good for you. This is just what's always been in my cabinet. Look at me. So a couple of these chickpeas, because the recipes are gonna go in the oven a little bit. And then, yep, she was a little bit lazy. That's okay, it's fine. And it's got a little shaker top. I know, I know, it's not who I am. And usually I go get the good, the good feta from you know the guy behind the counter, the high counter. And But I didn't do that today, I'm sorry, I apologize. It was a busy day. So we're gonna sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, it's like snow, but it's not. Thank God. <laughs> And there we go. Again, you eat with your eyes first. So a lot of color, a lot of different textures here. Um, we'll probably top it off with the chicken. And usually, you know, I usually at the end, I have a beautiful plate of whatever, but um, in this house, this bowl was damn expensive. So we eat out of it. So two forks, <laughs> that's how it's gonna go. <laughs> and that's gonna be dinner tonight over here. So wish you were here. Um, I would portion you off some, obviously, but thank you so, 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 so much for coming back to the Creaky Kitchen, everyone. Um, really, really appreciate seeing all of you and getting to interact on the chat and meeting Ginger, and this was just phenomenal. So thank you guys so much, and yes, happy Arthritis Awareness Month. Yes, Chantel, thank you so much. That looks delicious. Happy Arthritis Awareness Month, everyone, and please be, join us next month for our Migraine Awareness Month special. Uh, where we'll be doing another episode. Um, so have a good night, everyone on the East Coast or a good late afternoon if you're on the West Coast. Uh, and we'll see you all next month. Thanks for joining us.